Kolkata, you won a very nice game today against the top seed uh, Stavrola Solakidu and uh, it was I guess a very interesting game so let's go from the start uh, first of all you chose this NG2 line in the E3 mm -hmm. Nimjo yeah. and she played C6 yeah. were you surprised or no I uh, she doesn't have many games in the Nimso uh, Knight G2 line but I saw one game where they played C she played C6 only so I prepared that line actually it's a uh, pretty much a very solid line for black and it's actually equal but uh, I couldn't find anything better and so I thought even equal position it's okay I'll just keep playing so it was it was a good position for me um, after rook like she played bishop c7 actually, but I also uh, saw that instead of bishop c7, better was first d take c4, then e5, because then I get an iqp, because I haven't castled yet, so I don't have rook d1. I get an iqp, but that's still equal, because I still have lots of like dynamic chances there, but then after bishop c7, castle e5, rook d1, she took rook takes. Um, I think I saw queen e7. Uh, and then g6 to prevent knight f5. I think the queen is better placed on e7 anyway than e8. So, but even after queen e8, I thought this um, knight c4 idea is good to play knight d6 and get rid of the dark mm -hmm. squared bishop because then like the dark squares will be weaker and anyway the bishop on c7 is pretty good bishop. So then after the... W were you surprised that she played c5 and oh, c5? not take on e4? Just. Uh, she took on e4. I think I was planning to take with the knight on yeah knight only, and then still I can play knight d6. And then I also have this knight g5 idea that's also there at some point. Also, I saw, I was looking at rook takes e4 too, but I wasn't surprised with c5. I saw c5. Um, it makes some sense because at least she gets the pawns advanced. So then after knight d6, bishop takes d6, rook takes d6, queen e5, rook back, and then. Bishop d7. So at that point, uh, I think I'm slightly better because I have the two bishops and I slowly I'll get my piece, develop my pieces out, which I did. And then after that, um, I still think it was pretty much solid. Like each uh, equal position, only slightly better. But even though I had doubled up my rooks on the d file, the problem was um, I had to give away my dark squared bishop in order yes. to do that. That would have been a pretty tough decision because yeah. the bishop pair was your only advantage there. Yeah, but if I if I didn't give away my bishop, I think um, she she would play knight b4 next. That's the problem. Also, then the knight on d5 is pretty firmly placed too, even if she does it. I had to play a4 and make a concession before because she was threatening bishop a4 mm -hmm. and there was no good defense against that. Um, so I thought still that if I take, I have slight advantage. But after that, it's still difficult to like, like uh, penetrate because her knight's on f6 and it's still like good for her. Um, so I played queen c3 at one point. We were both in time trouble at that point. And I thought she would play king g8 back to get out of the pit. Yes. And then I was just thinking what to do there. I was maybe thinking of retreating or even playing b3 there. But b3, the problem is maybe rook d8 and then she can exchange the rooks. So maybe I would have to play back to queen b3 or something. So I was thinking about that, but then she took on a4, which I didn't... But, but before she did all of this, uh, there was a repetition once. Uh, she went uh, knight yeah, e8, yeah. rook d2, or I think rook d1 back, and then yeah. uh, she came back. Yeah, nice. But you played f3, so you were not happy with the draw. Or what no, was it? I was fine with the draw, but then I I didn't see a point of immediately taking the draw because I thought I can't really lose that position, like not lose, like even be worse in that position. Okay. So I just thought f3, I can try for e4 because if I can play e4, e5, then the knight is running out of squares. So I thought that would be possible. I was a little bit concerned about my dark squares, so I wasn't sure if I should play e4 yet. That's why I played queen c3 first, actually, because if I play e4 first, I've got queen e5. And then my dark squares are actually weak, and mm -hmm. I cannot play queen c3 now, and I cannot play f4, and my knight's also under attack on g3. So, so that's what I was thinking about. So I decided to play queen c3 first, and then I saw bishop takes a4, but I thought that was, I didn't calculate everything because I didn't have any time. But then I just thought that was risky because I saw this knight e4 idea with rook d6. I think she only saw b3, but after b3 she can play bishop c6, and then I cannot play knight e4. And if rook d6, then I think just rook e d8. 
Yeah, and then the rooks get exchanged, then she can play king g8. Because my knight is also blocking my g-pawn. So I played knight e4, and I'm not fully sure if that works yet, but she didn't take the rook. If she took the rook, I thought rook d6. And then I didn't see any defense against knight takes f6, at least what I saw I didn't see. Like I saw rook d8, and then I saw rook e8, king h6. King h6 may be possible. But it's risky, I think. But, but I have to, I have to give you a small hint here that bishop into d1 loses miserably yeah, to does, a very right? strong move for white. Oh, it's now rook d6. No. It was also rook d7. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw rook d7 after she played move back. Yeah. But rook d7 yeah. is not so easy to calculate when you have very little time because after queen d7, knight f6, uh, well, it's it shows computer shows yeah. it's completely winning for white, but. Is it going to be mate? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the queen is hanging. If you move the queen, I guess knight h5. King something. f8. So, so maybe, maybe. Th that that's completely winning yeah, for you. Yeah, queen g7, queen takes f7 is coming. Yes. Yeah, that's there. Yeah, I was just thinking rook d6, but then I didn't know she was going to take my rook. Uh, yeah, I was calculating bishop c6 only because, um, because maybe rook d7 may be working there too, but I don't think... No, I don't think it would work. Just queen d1 check is possible. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like bishop d5 was easier anyways, because yes. I don't have to calculate anything there. <laughs> so then once the bishop takes, if rook takes, then rook d6 is coming. And even if b5 with the idea of b4, I can simply play b3 and then retreat. The queen so, always yeah. remains on the diagonal. Yeah. And then after that, I think it was nothing much, because g5, yeah... Um, I have, she has to play g5 one point, she has to make that concession, but the knight g3 is very strong. Because after knight f5, even if she moved her king back, instead of what she did with queen c7, after knight f5, the queen cannot move to any square where it defends the knight. Oh, yes. So it's it's lost only. Well, the end was very nice mm -hmm. and you kept your uh, cool under time pressure. Yeah. Uh, what kind of a player would you describe yourself to be? An aggressive one, a positional player? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm too aggressive because I don't play too aggressive, but I would say I'm dynamic. Like when the position says I can play really like dynamic and make threats, but then I can also play positional and slow. So I think I'm both, but definitely not too aggressive or not too positional, like in the middle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you had a very interesting game in one of the rounds against Mahalakshmi mm -hmm. where you were, I guess, lost at some point yeah uh, did you did you see uh, that did you feel that you could defend that position or you're just making moves actually I saw the I actually immediately realized I blundered when I played Queen a4 I saw that before in the calculation but then at that point I don't know what happened to me but I just instantly moved because I saw Queen a4 in another line where it was actually working and there was no rook d2 at that point but then I don't know what happened, and I just moved queen a4. I saw rook d2 was losing for me before, but at that point I just moved. And then after rook d2, I realized it was like lost because I'm going to be in zigzag at some point. Because um, I don't think I, there's like any immediate way to get out of it. But then I thought that there's no point of like uh, resigning or thinking I'm lost because anything could still happen. So I decided to keep playing. And then I did see this idea of queen takes c5 at some point to play um, queen e7 and queen f6. But, uh, I mean, I thought she would play queen b4 and prevent that idea, and then still she can take my pawns and still lost. Or even I think c6 may be possible, because uh, as long as she doesn't play h4, it's fine. Because after h4, that pawn hangs after queen e7. That's why I was not working, taking my bishop. But uh, I'm just... I'm just happy that it worked out. Yes, but after taking your bishop, I think uh, there was one move that she could have won with if she would have taken on g2 instead of moving the bishop back to c4. Yeah, bishop takes g2 was possible. And then that's completely winning because you lose h3, e3 yeah. and everything. Yeah, but under g2. time pressure, yeah. I think it was very difficult yeah. to find that. Uh, and could you tell us about uh, your Indian connection? Do, have you been to India ever or what is it like? Um, I've been to India twice, I think. Okay, I think, yeah, where, twice. Where? Where, where is your, uh, do your uh, My grandparents live in Vishakhapatnam, so I've been there before, but not too much, just only twice. But, uh, yeah, I still like India, I guess. Sure. I, and we hope that someday you will come and play in India. Thank you. Good luck and uh, congratulations for today. Thank you.